afternoon, co uh, colleagues. We have a quorum. I will call for apologies. I have received an apology from Dr. Bielby and received an apology from Councillor Malloy. Can I please have a mover for those apologies? Councillor Curex moved, seconded by Councillor Baldock. I'll put that all those in favour. Please say aye. Against, carried. We've had our public forum already for the day. Um, we have a no chairperson's report. Um, no late items. I'm assuming that's a misprint. <laughs> I'm hoping that's a misprint. Yep, there's no late items. Uh, confidential business transferred in the open. Nothing. We just have a set of minutes and confidential. No change to the order of business. We have our minutes starting on page number seven. Um, are there any um, amendments to those minutes before I move them? Page seven. I'm looking at Councillor Brown <laughs> before you move. <laughs> oh no, okay, Councillor Brown is, um, is off duty. Um, okay, moved by Councillor Clout, seconded by Mayor Brownless. I'll put that all those in favour say aye. Against carried. Are there any matters arising from those minutes? No, no matters arising. There is. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Thank you, page 12, just a staff follow up to provide us with a past paper presented to Council six to ten years ago regarding a seawall stock take. The amount of money that was put in for renewals. Page 12, bullet point one. Page five of the minute. Yep, we haven't responded to that one yet, and we will. Um, declarations of conflict of interest, uh, yes. Councillor, um, I mean the Mayor, Mayor yep. Brown. So far. Uh, yes, uh, in relation to the item 139 in the financial support regarding notable trees, I'll declare a conflict of interest. Uh, thank you for that, that is duly noted. Moving on to the business colleagues. The review of the financial support to landowners for management of notable trees policy. Uh, we are doing that now. That was left to lie on the table from the previous meeting. Um, Emma Joyce is going to just refresh us on that paper and I believe that you have a slight correction in terms of the operational practice of lodgement fees and, and uh, helping us with our understanding of what that means in the recommendation. Um, certainly, so just to give you a bit of context, this report was left on the table back in June um, for two reasons. One was um, we were dealing with an outstanding issue with somebody who had applied to um, remove trees and also um, for some legal advice. So both of those issues have been resolved. So this report has come back. Um, just to note that there is a error in recommendation A. It says the operational practice of waiving resource consent applications. We can't actually do that. It should say note the operational practice of waiving lodgement fees for resource consent application just to do that. Um, so, yeah, just happy to answer any questions. Questions, colleagues? Uh, Councillor Baldock. I just might suggest that i um, happy to move something very quickly if there are not too many questions, but I would like to include what is at the bottom of the page, a review of notable trees across Tarrant will be undertaken as part of the upcoming city plan review. I'd like to see that included in the resolution if that would be possible, because that way we send a clear message, we're going to do it. It's crazy to do anything now, at this end of the triennium. So the wording for that would be <coughs> that you uh, see notes the um, review of... Uh, any, any questions, Councillor Stewart, I believe you had a question. On page 22, paragraph 4, last sentence says staff facilitated emergency works to notable trees on Crown land. Um, who paid for that? Was it ratepayers or did the Crown pay? Uh, through the Chair, I'd just like to ask Warren from the um, Spaces and Places team to answer that. Uh, through the Chair, um, TCC paid for that. Follow-up question, is that a common practice in that situation? 
Uh, if the trees are deemed a health and safety um, danger, then we will undertake the works if failure is imminent. Okay, questions exhausted? No, Councillor Mason? Sorry, I can't recall where it is, but um, somewhere I read that um, the Tarong City Council is one of their perhaps only councils who does waive the fees. Is that correct? Um, not in terms of waiving the lodgement fees, but in taking a um, proactive role in inspecting notable trees. Um, in other councils, it's the responsibility of the landowner. Um, we will do our biennial inspections. That's something that we've signed up through both the policy and our strategy to undertake biennial inspections of tree health and to do any resulting works. Supplementary? Right. Is that because the trees go very fast here, so it's a perennial sort of issue, or I'm um, just looking for those? Um, <laughs> some punny. Um, through the chair, I understand it's something that was put into a strategy from 2006, and so we have that obligation, and it's reiterated into the policy. I'm not sure the context or background as to why that came in. Question, Councillor Bulldog, then Councillor Robson. Um, yeah, just this this comes up because of the Wakefield Avenue issue with those trees, and just wanted to get a tracking on that from Christine, perhaps, or maybe it's Gareth. That that's was going to be coming back after our last resolution. Is that is there a chance of that occurring before the end of this triennium? Through the chair, I'll have to check, but I don't think we were aiming for before the triennium, based on. Uh, I'll, I'll check. Just following up um, Councillor Stewart's earlier question with regard to the Crown land, would it be wrong to assume that was a school or it talks about school children? I'm just interested to know what particular piece of land the work was done on. Uh, through the chair, it was Taronga Primary School. Thank you. Okay, I've got an indication from Councillor Baldock that he wishes to move the resolutions on screen, see as additional. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Clout. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor just, Baldock? Yeah, just very briefly. Um, this does come up from the Wakefield Drive um, presentation. It was made in the open forum, and we're working through that. Um, it's not, I don't think, sensible to try and amend the vegetation tree management policy in this regard right now, but I do look forward to the review and I just hope that I am returned six successfully to the chair, uh, to the table to um, play a part in it because I think there is still some refining to be done with our notable tree register and the way we address things. For me, the principle is if it's, if it's a notable tree on private land, it is for the benefit of everybody and we need to look at how we fund and, and address that. And when they get too big, the every tree must come to, on private land, every tree must come to a point where it's just outgrown its place there. And that's what we need to address in a city plan review, I think, so that we have a better mechanism for addressing the concerns, that I think very legitimate concerns that have been raised by the Wakefield residents, quite frankly. Seconder, you wish to speak? Reserve. Uh, other speakers, Councillor Stewart. Thank you. Many people in the community with notable trees on their property have been waiting for years for the city plan review of notable trees, so uh, it can't come fast enough for many in the community. Okay, any further speakers? Councillor Granger. Yeah, it was just supplementary to what um, Councillor Bulldog said there. Um, I think there is something missing, and I've said it in the past, as regards to the health of the tree. We give them certain um, uh, marks or levels or whatever the case may be, but we don't take into consideration the surrounding people. And this has, this has to come on board. And I think that should be part of the equation as regards to judging whether it's a notable tree or not. The sooner that comes in, the better. Further speakers? Councillor Robson? Yeah, look, I'm happy to support the motion, including the additional C proposed by Councillor Baldock. I would note 
um, the additional words spoken by Councillor Baldock when moving the motion and would agree with them wholeheartedly. Um, Councillor Baldock and I perhaps don't agree often enough, but when we do, I think it's a cause for celebration. In that regard, though, I would note that given the sentiment around the council table, if Councillor Baldock had put as much effort into getting this across the line rather than the somewhat pyrrhic challenge of the museum, we would probably have the policy in place now that would support the provision of assistance to people who are blessed and, let's be honest, sometimes cursed with having a notable tree on their property. So, yeah, there's still time, Councillor. Notice a motion can be done pretty quickly. Thank you, and just guidance from the Chair, let's not provoke, and I know that's very rich, me saying that. Um, Councillor Clout, are you still on the bench? You're fine. A right reply, Councillor Baldock. I, I do welcome Councillor Robson's remarks, and it, it, it would just be wonderful one day if he knew how to stop before putting the boot in with some concluding comments. But I, I take the positive sentiments. Very much welcome. Thank you, sir. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? I don't hear a no. That's carried. Uh, can you please turn with me now, colleagues, to page 39, which is the response to the Productivity Commission draft report. And we have uh, Ross Hudson presenting to us on that. Thank you, Ross. Uh, good afternoon. So as you know, the Productivity Commission has been uh, inquiring into local government funding and financing, uh, looking across issues of transparency, efficiency, uh, equity allocation and uh, financial sustainability. Council responded to the inquiry phase of that uh, process in February, uh, focusing particularly on issues relating to funding and financing of growth. Uh, and the increased costs um, uh, being placed on councils for delivering um, uh, services in relation to regulatory changes made by government. Um, the Commission has produced its draft report, which covers a wide range of issues. Uh, the report in front of you uh, tries to draw out uh, what we see as being the uh, most pertinent issues from a governance perspective, uh, those with political implications and those with significant financial implications for council, um, particularly in relation to financial governance, uh, again, growth funding, uh, rating structures, uh, climate change, adaptation funding. Uh, the deadline's the 29th of August. We're uh, seeking your views, uh, agreed positions, any revisions that you'd like to see included uh, within the submission prior to sign off. Um, I think probably in the context of where we are in the triennium and so forth, it's probably important to note that it's unlikely that government's going to lead a charge in relation to most of these recommendations in the near term. Uh, and these things are going to come up again through um, consideration of the financial strategy, etc., with the upcoming uh, LTP. Probably the exceptions to those things are those uh, elements that are getting taken forward through other mechanisms, um, infrastructure financing, opportunities off balance sheet, urban development agencies, um, potentially the work around climate change adaptation funding. Um, but happy to take questions and to f um, between Jeremy Fraser, Christine, and myself, we'll attempt to answer them. Okay, thank you, Clout, and then Baldock, and then Stuart. Uh, thanks very much, Ross. Um, have we been in touch with any councils who would be radically affected by dropping the commercial differential? Because we know that some of our bigger uh, neighbours or bigger city colleagues um, have significant uh, commercial business differentials, and clearly this would be a massive impact on them. Um, any sort of discussion that we've had or likely to have? No, I'm obviously aware that some of those metros have large differentials, Wellington in particular, but no, I've not had any discussions with them. Uh, paragraph 9 bothers me a lot, and um, thank you for the response that we've written there. They would be proposing development of mandatory standardised approaches. 
can we insert something there just about the what was going to be included in legislation and an amendment, I thought, where we would have the ability to add a contingency in DC so that we had a 10% contingency for future cost incre increases, which would mean we'd get a lot closer to making growth pay for growth, and I think we should yell that loud if we could. So through the Chair, we could just make a statement that um, through the years we've identified that we were unable to f collect the full cost of growth and there is a shortfall always attributed to the ratepayer. One way to address that shortfall would be, so we can provide some evidence around that. So, yeah, we could add that in. We could say that it would be refunded if not needed, you know, if it goes back at the end. I know we don't want to do it, but, but you know, in principle, you the, would say. The refund provisions sit in the law anyway, so you actually don't need to make a statement around that. So if you collect development contributions and you don't spend it for the purpose for which it was collected, you have to repay it, yeah. Uh, I would suggest looking around the table that there would be strong agreement with the point Councillor Bullock has raised, and yes, so uh, I think that's a point that we need to make. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stewart. Um, hmm. I, I just wonder why this couldn't have been pre circulated, perhaps. It's quite a bit in it, and um, it would have been perhaps. Um, was, it, was it pre circulated? Well, the link to the Product Review Commission document was sent out to you a couple of days after it was released, probably about three weeks ago now. Oh, I overlooked it then, I apologise. Um, can I just raise page 49, it says minor costs associated, it's under number four, uh, joint administration for MOA, I wouldn't think it's a minor cost myself, and isn't there also costs involved with um, Kai Tuna and the Toronga Moana? committee meetings as well, if we're going to start. The Kaituna River Authority, the river is through the Regional Council, we're a participant, but it's basically led by Regional Council and we're a supporter. We're in a support role, Regional Council's in lead role on that, so we've put a bit of staff time in there. Um, much more Moana. 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 The Again, um, the regional council is the lead on that. We've, we are a participant, uh, so we do have some role, but it's predominantly led by the regional council and a lot of the actions that we are responsible for under the Taramawana Harbour Management Plan are consistent with actions that are coming out of other strategies, documents or plans. Um, it just collates all of those that relate to the harbour in one, in one place. Thank you. And if I may, Mr Chair, just another matter. Paragraph 31 regarding rates. Um, the Commission finds little or no evidence that rates have become less affordable over time. Um, it notes particular concerns over older fixed income households may in general be overstated um, as the majority of these households are mortgage free homeowners. Well I personally know a lot of elderly people who live in properties that have um, escalated in cost and who do uh, have issue with their rates increases over time. So I, I don't um, concur with the comment there. Okay, colleagues, I'm going to now ask you whether uh, you would like to indicate any changes or emphasis in the submission that you would like to see. And uh, if that's the case, please indicate it, and then we'll have a very quick discussion on it. Um, I'm personally quite happy with the submission, thank you for it, uh, and in both the letter and Appendix A and B, I think that those cover our collective position quite well, so thank you. Uh, is there any further comments, Councillor Mason? At um, points about no, uh, 31, um, Councillor Stewart raises, um, when just a clarification, I, I wouldn't want her coming to, to, to um, influence what you're going to be doing unless it was some sort of vote, you know, just uh, because I, th I think that, you know, if... Um, we can have a straw poll on that. Yeah, yeah that would... Yeah, yeah the, the submission is silent on that point, isn't it? Our submission, we, that's, yeah. So there is no position of, there is no statement from Tauranga City Council in response to that point. Uh, Fraser. Oh, 
spent it. Well, that's that's pretty good. Are you, are you happy to let that one lie, Councillor Mason? Oh no, you, thank you. <laughs> well, we should have a straw poll on that then. Don't mind. Thank you, Fraser. Sorry, Fraser. Which page again? Thirty. Uh, no. Uh, it's this, I think, Councillor Mason, the second part of the sentence is what you're referring to. So, on page 56, the last... Um, column, not column, what's the other one, what's the other word for, row, there you go, thank you, the last row uh, talks about the rates rebate scheme but after the comma it says, um, <coughs> I, I do agree with the rates postponement scheme, I think it's an excellent idea, yeah. but um, I, th I think just getting to the, uh, to the point about people who have perhaps paid off their property, um, they, their, their accommodation costs or property costs will be much lower than people who are paying a rent. So the, the point that uh, Councillor Stewart makes about um, perhaps retired people uh, having higher costs, I wasn't sure whether she meant rents or the actual maintenance costs of having a, a house or whatever it might be. I just wanted some clarification around that. That's fine. And, and this is quite specifically tailored to the rates rebate scheme rather than the, the wider rates affordability uh, argument than, than what we were talking about. So I'd be content to uh, leave that as, as written without changing it. Uh, any other comments from colleagues? No, then I'm going to ask for a mover. Moved by Councillor Robson. Seconder, please. Seconded by Councillor Baldock. Uh, do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Robson? Yeah, I, I had the privilege of being interviewed by the Product Committee Commission. I, I think the, <coughs> as is often the case, the scope with which they were given to work was somewhat constrained. I think, unfortunately, there were some issues that they should have been given the freedom to address. I think that came as a directive out of central government, who are loved, how can I put it, <coughs> imposing burdens and reviews on local government without resourcing us accordingly, the four well-beings being probably the worst and most egregious example. Um, but I think staff have done a good job here, and I think the f keeping the focus quite narrow on things that are very specific to this particular territorial authority with its growth issues, with the DC issues, I, and I think that's really, really important. Um, so I think this is a job well done, frankly. It was a potential minefield, and I think we avoided all the mines, kept the focus, and we've given a nicely considered response. So, Baldock is seconded. Do you wish to speak? Any further speakers? There being none, no need to exercise your right of reply. I'll put the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? And carried. Okay, let's move on now to the adoption of the draft coastal structures policy, which came out of the uh, discussion, lengthy discussion we had last policy committee. That is on page 125. Uh, do you, would you would you like to speak to the policy to help us uh, get back on on task, colleagues? Um, good evening, everyone. Again, just to summarise. So this is looking to adopt a draft. Coastal Structures Policy. We discussed the issues and options at the last policy commission meeting. So we've taken those, put them in a draft policy. There's only there's a couple of issues um, for your consideration. Um, one was um, there were some questions around the wording that we should have about protecting private property, whether that should refer to habitable floors. Um, so that's an issue for your consideration. Um, the second issue is in the previous report we had noted that we weren't in a position to say that we wouldn't um, maintain transport infrastructure if it required a seawall, um, and we're just looking to for some direction on that point as well, which is option issue two. Sorry. Colleagues, if you could, uh, if there are any questions, could you answer, ask them now? But I'd also ask uh, you whether you would consider 
uh, issue 1 and issue 2, which are on page 126 and 127, uh, and whether you disagree with those recommendations and whether you would uh, perhaps be keen to move an alternative, or in the alternative, you're happy with the recommendations and we can uh, just move the recommendations as written. So any questions, first of all, for staff? Uh, Councillor Mason. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Brownless. I just wanted to, I, have, have, I haven't seen reference to it, but perhaps I've missed it, is the, the comment that um, <coughs> people with uh, private um, coastal structures or um, have have made frequently is that they might be actually invest in putting something on their own land, but unless their neighbours do something similar, it's it's not going to you know in in a, in a structured sort of coherent integrated way, then it's not really going to protect them um, in the long run. I, is there any sort of um, uh, thought been given to cooperative um, sort of incentives to for for neighbours to cooperate to to get uh, longer walls? Um, or structures, something along those lines, because it would certainly benefit us, the council and, and the wider community as well. Through the chair, there hasn't been any consideration of this in the policy, and most of those issues would be a resource management issue, as they would require a consent, um, and we can't kind of encourage people to build structures if they don't want to. So, yeah. Further questions, and just Mayor Brown, this my apologies, uh, I'll give you the opportunity after this agenda item if there's anything you wish to raise around the Productivity Commission report. Um, no further questions. Councillor Curac. Page 127, the table there at the top, and the recommended option is 1.1, um, but in terms of 1.3, just if you can give it a little bit of speak to that, a little bit more about why 1.3 wasn't the preferred option? Uh, through the chair, um, I think we went with the idea of keeping pr private property as it's it's kind of allows us a bit more flexibility to work with a landowner on where we would want a structure to be positioned. If it was to protect a dwelling, um, it may limit us in having those conversations with a private landowner, so it was just to retain Okay, anybody prepared to move the recommendations? Moved by Councillor Bullock as written, seconded by, is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Clout. Uh, do you wish to speak to this, uh, Councillor Bullock? Well, again, it's a, um, it's a draft going out for consultation, so um, I, you know, we always remain open to those submissions that come in for various amendments to it, but I think the staff have done a good job in preparing this. And I, I didn't say it earlier, but I think um, Cameron uh, Campbell um, Larkin gave us such a, a very good presentation on other issues around our coastal structure, coastal areas, that um, I trust we are beginning to build some reputation with the community that we are handling these really important issues going forward uh, sensitively and with open dialogue with residents that are affected and um, we will be able to find ways forward to protect private property dwellings as we see the impact of the climate upon us. Seconder, do you wish to speak? Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm sure that um, most uh, of our community will be quite happy that we've um, made the provision or the allowance for hard structures to be um, placed along, you know, sea, well, obviously where the sea meets the land and uh, for the protection of uh, private property and, and I think that um, has to be a good thing overall so happy to support. The speakers, Councillor Robson. Yeah, I think the critical point for me is in paragraph 9 on page 128 of the agenda. <coughs> I think when you put in May, a person with private property is under threat will interpret that as you're obliged to and I think appreciate that human beings under pressure with their private property being threatened are going to look for help and support and finance and resourcing wherever they can find it. I'm not saying we take it out. 
I'm happy to vote in favour of the motion, but I think the communications and clarity that we need to get into the community to manage their expectations on this are going to be so critical. This is one of those cases where if you don't get that base understanding embedded as best you can in the community, the first time this happens, people will be referencing conversations that weren't had and documents that don't exist, right, to say that they remember a decision being made where we said we'd protect private property. So I, I just happy to support, <coughs> but if we get the comms light on this, we are creating a burden for some council at some time in the future. We know a call is going to be made at some point. Um, so I just stress that point. Thank you. Further speakers? <coughs> uh, right of uh, Councillor Stewart. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, happy to support it. Going up for consultation, I know there are many people in the community who are interested in this topic, so I'm sure we'll be hearing from them. Thank you. Right of reply, <coughs> Councillor Bulldock. No, I will put the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? That is carried. Um, now, Mayor Brownless, uh, we briefly discussed the Productivity Commission report, and that was passed as per the recommendations. Uh, there was one piece of guidance given. Uh, Councillor Baldock, um, could you just reiterate what that guidance was? We just um, inserted into the submission that we want to see that um, allowance for a 10% or whatever contingency on DC so that we're able to better future-proof the escalating costs and not have it passed to rate post. Can I ask, is that the letter you've endorsed, the letter as opposed to the point by point? Yeah. Point by point and the letter, both of them, yeah. Y any comments or wisdom just, you wish just to add? Just no general yep. comments, not just from wisdom. Um, <laughs> but uh, obviously we all re realise the importance. I think the, the we can see the local government funding and um, Commission, we can see them as something to try and to help us with a few difficulties in that they're not allowed to consider rates on uh, taxes on rates, they're not allowed to consider uh, government buildings paying development <coughs> contributions or rates. So they're sort of hamstrung to an extent, uh, but I believe they're doing their best. Um, if I just made a few points, I'm not convinced that we should um, require an independent chair. Um, or that the, that the government should require an independent chair of audit and risk. I still think that's what we're elected for. I'm not averse to having co-opting people onto the committee. That's just a couple of things that I want to mention. Um, the idea of the government considering making payments to territorial authorities based on new development consent levels to incentivise councils, it would be much simpler to share the GST on the new, new housing sales, and I've used that quote many times, 1,000 new houses, at 700 grand each is 91 million dollars to the government on GST, and I think a share of that would be fairer. But it should be backdated, you know, because you know some of our growth is going to be impeded if we run out of land. So it should be backdated. The other thing about um, accommodation levies, um, I don't care how they do it, but we've got to actually have, find a way of not having ratepayers fund tourism, basically. So. I'd be open to looking at any uh, anything there. Um, you're obviously aware something happened in Queenstown quite recently, and not surprisingly, 81% uh, of the residents voted in favour of that. So, um, and the only other thing, really, um, I totally support the off-balance sheet idea, the idea of Crown Infrastructure Partners are taking on uh, some of the debt, but I'm very concerned if, if that then is added to a rates bill in any way, guess what? People will add that and that's what the rates will be. So it's got to be separate from council. Um, and the, yeah, number 13, the targeted rates on land value, that's going to be an extremely difficult and pop unpopular thing to implement. Isn't it interesting that the commission is prepared to recommend that for us? us to do the, you know, the dirty work, as it were, but would they, you know, in terms of um, finding similar uh, revenues for government, I very much doubt that they would be suggesting something like that, so, yeah, that's 
just my thoughts. I'm happy to have supported what you've done. Thank you, Mayor Brownless. And in terms of the finance and risk, or the, the independent person on an audit committee as chair, uh, our submission is silent on that matter. It just says that we've considered it and chosen not to do so at this time, but it's silent on the issue. Um, I appreciate the opportunity just giving my opinions. I'm, I'm happy about the, the submission. That's fine. Thank you. Um, now turning to the last item in the open agenda, the amendment to the Turnagra Art Gallery Trust Statement of um, Intent um, and Blakeway. So through the chair, this is um, a report when councillors requested further information at the 30th of July policy committee meeting on the Taronga Art Gallery Trust's final statement of intent. Um, and it should be noted that we're, although we're required to receive the final statement of intent, because the Art Gallery is an incorporated trust under the Charitable Trust Act and owns its own assets, council is actually not a shareholder and is therefore not required to approve um, the final statement of intent. But um, the Art Gallery have come back with a revised um, financial statement uh, forecast for the statement of intent, um, which shows uh, a, still a deficit after depreciation, but is considerably better than the previous um, financial forecast. And um, just to add to this that we're, we're bringing to councillors next week the uh, board reviews for Tourism Bay of Plenty and the Art Gallery. And one of the areas of concern has been around financial sustainability and that it hasn't necessarily been addressed sufficiently by the board. Um, but I'm hoping personally that with Grant Neagle, who is um, a partner at Inga Mora, uh, has just recently joined the board on May the 1st as a new trustee. And I'm hoping that um, things will look a lot better with, with him now on the, the art committee. So um, yes, open to any questions that you may have. And obviously, I'm just the messenger here with the art gallery. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to attend today, but they can come to next week's council meeting if you would prefer to hear from them directly. I move that this item be tabled for the next council meeting. Are you, are you moving that it lie on the table till the next council yes. meeting? That's that's a procedural motion. Could could we would with your indulgence, you're entitled to move a procedural motion at any time. Would you uh, consider withholding that until we've had a chance for questions? You know that I chair in a generous fashion, oh. a lesson to all. Happy to do so. Okay. Are there any questions? I just saw Councillor Mason. Yes. Yeah, just about the procedural issue. Could could I just could we ask why? What what's your the motivation? What, was that no? We can't. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I would like to see the Taranga Art Gallery Trust representatives here. I'd like to see them speak to this. Um, I, I think the, you know, quite frankly, the statement made <coughs> with regard to being a messenger was a message to us, and I took that message. I understood it, I uh, hopefully correctly, and moved the procedural motion that I thought was appropriate in the light of that message. I d don't detect any further questions. I won't take any further questions on a procedural motion, but you've moved that line the table to the next council meeting. Is there a second before that? Seconded. That's seconded by Councillor Stewart. I'll put that without delay. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Um, so can I have all those in favour, please raise your hands. Uh, Morris, Borlock, Brown, Curac, Clout, Robson, Stewart, Granger, Mayor Brownless, against. Councillor Mason, that is carried. Okay, we'll move into confidential with your permission. Can somebody move? Are we move into confidential?